Okay, the next aspect of uh, methods we're going to look at is how to return uh, information to the calling code. So if we if we have some code that calls a method, uh, and then we want to send some information back to that, how how can we do that? And one way we can do it is with the return statement. And so we're going to look at the return statement uh, now. Um, so far in our methods, uh, remember our face print method? Um, when we declared it, we just said public void print face, and then we just had a return statement in here. And the return, when it, as soon as we get to the return statement, we go back to the main program. So in general, since the return statement marks the end, uh, you know, sends it back, you should not have statements after your return statement because they will not get executed. Uh, here now we will look at later on where we'll set up different statements where we might say if this and that happens and when sometimes we will then move returns inside uh, methods but we'll try to avoid that so your return statement should be the last statement in your method and it should just say now if this says void it should say return and not return anything but now we're going to put we're going to make some non-void methods and talk about that so here's an example so we're declaring a uh, public and again since we're in the textbook uh, way of doing this with the main program they have to do static but we won't in BlueJ we won't have to do static but they'll do public static int uh, so here's the type instead of void we're saying int um, and then inside our routine we're returning and so whatever we have after the return must be this type so it must be an int in this case so in this case we're saying compute a square uh, so like let's say we're calculating the size of the number of squares in a in a well in a square <laughs> um, so and we're passing one int so this is our a parameter so we're passing in a parameter number to square and then we're calculating so let's say well down here we said um, number to square is compute square of seven so we're calling this compute square method up here so um, when we get to this routine here number squared equals compute square will go up to this routine uh, this uh, argument or actual power seven will be passed up so number to square will be set to seven um, and then uh, we'll calculate 7 times 7, which is 49, and we'll return 49. So this integer value, 49, is returned. So what that means is that after the method is called, it's like this was initialized to whatever this expression we returned to was. So basically, this integer, this becomes an integer uh, on the return back to this. So we, we go up here, do this calculation, and return back and bring back the integer and sit it in here so that num square will now be equal to 49. So again, we can walk through this uh, this example uh, that talks about. So first, num square is set equal to 0, and then num square is set to 7. I mean, the, the, that argument is passed up here, 7 is passed up to here. And so again, go through the simulation. Uh, we calculate that the 49 is then sent back down here um, and so the the 49 has gone down here so whenever we have when we have a void method um, here so when we're calling a method that's of type void, it's on a line by itself. We might say the object name and then print face, or we might just say print face or something like that. But when we're returning a value, the method call can't be on a line in itself. It has to be like within someplace like an expression. So it has to be part of an assignment statement. This variable is assigned, and then on the right-hand side is the method call. It might be part of an expression, or it might be like in a print statement. Um, so again, this walks you through, explains that void means we don't have any returns, otherwise we have a return. And again, uh, here we're returning an int, and so in this case return 9, that looks good. Uh, and so go through these and see which of these return things uh, would work out okay, given that we want to return an int for calculate some value method. Um, 
Similarly here, we've got some uh, double here called square root, uh, and then a void print value. So there's two methods, one's a double and one's a void. Uh, so try to answer the questions for that. So again, remember, if it's void, it's got to be on, called on a line by itself. Uh, if it's uh, returning a double, in this case, it has to be either on the right side of an assignment or some expression, or maybe in a print statement. So again, go through these examples to try those out. So, um, And then this walks you through a mathematical calculation, another example where we're calculating a very, uh, uh, an amount. Uh, we're actually converting feet to centimeters, uh, and we're doing some calculation. We're passing in two parameters here, uh, and then doing some calculations, uh, and then returning some value here. Uh, so we do this calculation, and then we return this uh, value. Now, I, in a lot of uh, coding techniques, you'll be expected to do this in that re you can have an expression in the return, but you'll want to have a single variable. So here they have a variable they declared up here uh, called centimeter value. It's a double. They initialize the zero, and then they set it into some, they assign it some value, and then they return it. So this is good coding standard to declare a variable that you can use and then return that value. When we're debugging complicated code, this structure with this variable here and a return will make it a lot easier to see uh, any mistakes in our code. And then we're calling this uh, value, and here we're calling it within a print statement. We're saying height to feet here. Uh, so walk through this and look at this temperature conversion one, and we'll do some more examples uh, in our exercise on how to walk through these different routines.